Today, guys, we're going to be having a conversation about the Nintendo Switch 2 in regards to its specs because Digital Foundry slash Eurogamer had a conversation on it as well, and they gave us what they firmly believe to be what the Nintendo Switch 2 is going to be. And because I highly respect the likes of John Linneman and the rest of the crew over at Digital Foundry, I do think that they are very knowledgeable and are in the know. I think it's worth paying attention to. So I actually want to go over this and you know what? Find out what the heck is going on with Nintendo Switch 2. So as you see here at Eurogamer, uh, we have an article here that says Digital Foundry Weekly, the latest Switch 2 and PS5 Pro leaks. Are they actually plausible? And we're going to we're gonna go over uh, some of this stuff here. Uh, we're going to kind of ignore the PS5 Pro stuff because that's not our concern at the moment. Uh, but let's go to the Switch 2 leak section here. And it says, the Switch 2 leak last week showed an unfeasibly large display, standard Switch controllers in an unconvincing mount, and a decidedly non-Nintendo user interface. Now they're talking about some stuff we debunked in our last video. What was palpable was the complete lack of imagination though. And that's the thing. At this point, we have a fairly solid understand I think they meant understanding of what Switch 2 will actually be. We are totally convinced that it will be powered by a new NVIDIA SOC, likely the T239, first mentioned by the most reliable leaker of them all, Copite 7 Kimmy. And he's a very reliable NVIDIA leaker. Expect eight ARM A78. CPU cores, so eight ARM A78 CPU cores. That is really good, actually, and likely a 128-bit memory interface and an Ampere-class GPU with CUDA core counts in the 1,536 to the 2,048 range, along with one or two custom additions that have been hinted in NVIDIA LinkedIn profiles and oblique mentions in NVIDIA Linux updates. At this point. DLSS 2 support seems highly likely, as does ray tracing support, though ray tracing's high power requirements could see a pretty limited utilization. As an example, maybe you can't run ray tracing in handheld mode uh, because, again, notice they're not going into clock speeds here. Uh, and then they have their full video here with all of the timestamps on everything these three people talked about. So, the big thing here is obviously just having some idea of what the Nintendo Switch 2 is. Now, a lot of this stuff has been rumored and speculated and highly debated forever. And the, the biggest thing is just the clock speeds, right? A lot of people sort of figure it's probably going to have at least 8 gigabytes of RAM. It's going to have probably the 8 uh, A78 ARM CPU cores. But what are they clocked at? And the, the, the GPU, what is it clocked at? Because... Well, clock speeds don't always matter in many cases. When you're talking about a device that's running on cutback power, power, you know, we're talking like 10 watts, 15 watts, 18 watts, maybe 20 watts at most, you are talking about a device that the clock speeds are actually a major factor because they're basically the limiting factor. If you look at the Nintendo Switch, its Tegra X1 uh, hardware, like its, its main chip, does not even run at the base clocks of the chip, and that is because it takes too much power draw for Nintendo to be comfortable to make that the case. Now, we can actually, you know, through a hack switch, overclock, you know, we call it overclocking, but really get the, the actual chip to run at its base clocks. And the switch handles it just fine, and the heat output isn't too crazy, but obviously that massively affects battery life. And I think the last time I tested it, I ended up cutting the battery life almost in half to do this. So you can see that small boost in performance, cutting battery life in half, you can see where that trade-off was made by Nintendo. So I am very curious to see how they handle this. Obviously, these chips are typically, you know, they're newer. They're way more efficient. So, you know, they can run at certain speeds and certain this that maybe the prior ones couldn't. But I'm, I'm very interested to see what the actual specs of the system is. Because for all of the speculation we've talked about, like, hey, what kind of advancements could they do to the new Joy-Cons? Hey, what sort of gimmick or camera or something are they going to throw on this thing to make it stand out from the original Nintendo Switch? Or, you know, are they going to stick with an, L an LCD panel or stick with the OLED panel? Or, you know, what are they going to charge for the thing? Or when is it going to come out? Like, those are the two most prevalent conversations, right? Hey, how expensive is this thing going to be? And when the hell are they releasing it? And those are important conversations. But really... 
What matters is what is this thing? What is inside of it? And Nintendo doesn't give us those details. That's the big thing. We don't get the details from Nintendo. We get them from people who get their hands on it and tear it down. We get the information from inside developers. You know, a lot of the actual specs we don't get from Nintendo because Nintendo, unlike Sony and Microsoft, doesn't really care as much to provide spec information. Like you'll see Sony and Microsoft when they're launching new systems talk about how powerful it is and they'll, they'll talk about T-flops and whole bunch. Of, Nintendo doesn't talk about any of that stuff. They'll talk about the architecture. Nintendo's like, nah, we don't talk about that stuff. But uh, other people will. So we'll we'll get an idea of what this thing is capable of at some point. But it is interesting that Digital Foundry is very well bought into, like, hey, all this stuff around the T239 from the NVIDIA leaks and the LinkedIn profiles, like, this stuff is all real. We believe it. This is what's going to happen. Because Digital Foundry is one of the most respected outlets in the world when it comes to examining technology and technology rumors, uh, specifically for gaming devices. And they have a very, very good track record that when they firmly believe something to be the case, that ends up being the case. And remember, Digital Foundry are the ones that broke the story that dev kits were recalled. Like the Switch Pro actually did exist. It was a device Nintendo released at some point. So we're talking about like a new Nintendo Switch or like a new Nintendo 3DS. There was going to be a mid-gen upgrade, but due to the pandemic, it ended up getting canceled. And Nintendo did recall those devices in the second half of 2022 and that's obviously very fascinating and they were the people to break that story saying hey we got actual developers that were had the damn dev kits that are like hey you know what it got recalled by nintendo meaning that nintendo was going to end up sending out new dev kits at some point for a new device and that's apparently what we've been hearing from all the rumors and speculation now and into the future is that that's exactly what nintendo has been doing slowly dispersing brand new dev units for a new system. So I would be just morbidly curious if some old developer that had a Switch Pro dev kit, if they could just tell us what it was like or if they knew what the specs were. But you know what? None of it really matters anymore since it's a device that doesn't come out. And Nintendo has prototypes and dev units all the time that end up not coming out. So guys, I am just going to end it there. Thank you guys so much for being here. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And uh, let me know your thoughts about Switch 2 down below. Uh, hopefully we have another video dropping later today. And don't forget, we have a podcast tonight, our spoiler cast for Tears of the Kingdom. It's going to be a big one, our biggest show we've ever done. So hopefully you guys decide to tune in and I'll catch you then.